is there any specific you know uh, kind of boards you support or you can simulate any board doesn't matter because you have to actually as you said you have to, you can also help with debugging and all of things so it's just not simulating the board but it you have to go deeper into that so can you talk about that aspect absolutely uh, there's a lot of coverage that we have but of course there's a lot of things that we haven't done yet uh, i'll talk about the things that we've done and perhaps hint at a few things that we're planning for. In general, the ecosystem that Zephyr covers is mostly, you know, uh, ARM on the one hand, Cortex-M devices is one of the primary focuses, I would say, but there are also different architectures. There's RISC-V, of course, um, there's Extensa, there's uh, ARC, there's a number of different architectures. ARM is, of course, dominant. It's one of the, you know, biggest contenders in the IoT space, which Zephyr also covers. But it's by, by no means the only one. And so Renode similarly covers, uh, you know, a broad range of architectures and focuses mainly on ARM uh, for, for the small IoT devices. But we also have, for example, very, very strong RISC-V support. And actually, just recently, we added support for the Extensa architecture, which will allow us to also support, for example, the expressive platforms that have pretty, uh, you know, good representation among all sorts of hobbyists and maker projects in the world. So generally speaking, um, there's a broad range of things that both Zephyr and Renault support. And of course, uh, when you talk about Zephyr and Renault support, you should also talk not just about platforms, but also interfaces on those platforms. So there's both uh, wired communication interfaces, wireless communication interfaces, and we do both. And now naturally, um, our coverage is, you know, kind of uh, better here and worse there. And we're kind of improving that all the time with uh, vendors. It's been a great collaboration, you know, since we became a platinum member of Zephyr project, uh, we've worked more closely with the hardware vendors and we've been able to, you know, just directly interact with them uh, to improve support for their own platforms in, in Renode. Um, and we have things like Bluetooth support, as an example, uh, for Nordic platforms, but uh, just, just literally today I learned that, you know, someone's going to contribute some Wi-Fi support on, on you know, Silicon Labs platforms. And uh, uh, in general, we've done lots of different devices like CAN, like Ethernet, like, of course, Spy, I2C, uh, and so on and so on. So there's plenty of topics there. There's plenty of complexity. And uh, this is by no means to say that we, you know, we've done everything there is to do. Uh, on the contrary, um, there's still quite a long way ahead of us, just like with Zephyr, right? There's always new platforms being released. There's always uh, a new and more interesting peripherals to, to build drivers for. Uh, but that's what we offer. As a company, we kind of build those tools uh, as a service. So uh, it's kind of uh, great to see this technological development that we can kind of follow and perhaps not even just follow, but uh, spearhead, right? And uh, help uh, push this in, in different kinds of directions, one of which is making it more open. One of the things that we have been focusing in Zephyr is trying to explain how important it is to, to, to keep Zephyr open and vendor neutral and standardized. Uh, we believe this is, you know, the only way to address this complexity really is openness.